In this episode two of the Black Magic Raw series, we're looking at matching the uh, Ursa Mini Pro G2 with the Black Magic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K and the benefits or lack thereof of shooting Black Magic Raw as opposed to the widely used industry standard ProRes HQ. Let's do it. Context setting. I've loved shooting RAW since early 2013 when I first got my hands on a Red Scarlet MX and the, the flexibility of that, um, of that RAW R3D codec and being able to change my ISO later when I got it wrong at the time, being able to change my white balance and my tint to me, that was something that got me you know, out of a tight spot um, a lot. Um, and probably maybe made me a little bit slack on set. And sometimes when I'd go and shoot with a B or C cam or just on a shoot on a camera with a compressed codec, um, I'd be like, ah, oh, crap, you know, cause I was in that habit of, oh, I can change my white balance. Oh, I can change that later. One of the instigators of th this particular video was on a, on a previous video I did, I mentioned that I was shooting with the G2 and the, uh, and the 6K together. I can't remember who it was, so I'm, I'm sorry to you whose comment it was, and I promised them I'd, I'd make this video. They spoke about the, the green tint um, that's just there on the 6K that's just so different from the Ursa G2. So look, what I set out to do with this particular episode is I've gone and shot a heap of vision inside under controlled lighting conditions, no external light, as well as some, some quick shots outside in both ProRes HQ and in Blackmagic RAW. And what I was looking to do is just shoot under the same, basically under the same ISOs, under the same white balances uh, and the same tint settings in both Blackmagic RAW and in ProRes HQ, and then look at matching these up together in post and then pushing those settings to absolute extremes just to just to really see well what are, what the, are the benefits of shooting black, black magic, magic raw? raw so first of all going back to what i was talking about with this uh the, this viewer that talked about the difference between the pocket 6k and the ursa g2 and the green tint generally for me all that takes to fix up when i'm shooting in black magic raw it's just a matter of a slight tint adjustment on the 6K. So if you're viewing this footage, say you take it out of log, so you can just apply uh, the Blackmagic LUT for each of these, uh, the one that applies to each of these cameras to change them from, to view from film to the Rec. 709 video um, setting. And then basically it's just a slight adjustment towards magenta um, on the 6K. We're usually bringing that in line more towards the Ursa because we find the Ursa is generally more color accurate but you could go the opposite way and then often um, we're finding with the 6k it's then a matter of just also a very slight very minor adjustment to the white balance and the level of adjustment that is needed depends on kind of seems to depend on the lighting conditions that we're in um, shooting outside in in daylight it's pretty minor and this example that i'll show um, at least an outdoor one, I think it was a, an adjustment of about it was 100 or 150 Kelvin and a slight tint adjustment. Then what I find is just the, the image from the Ursa G2, just although it has more kind of range in it, it, it has a bit of more natural, nice like contrast to it. Um, and I think because of the additional dynamic range, the highlights aren't so close to, to clipping. So generally, as a, as a general rule for me, what I find is I'm, I'm just bringing the highlights down a touch and I'm bringing the shadows down a touch uh, on the 6K. And then that brings it very quickly. And I'm not saying perfect, but really quickly, like for a client, for, for a corporate video, whatever it is. Um, so we're doing a, a two camera interview that very quickly gets it so close to being there in terms of those cameras matching. I also shot these shots in the backyard with ProRes. And for this video, I'm not looking at secondaries or any of that kind of stuff. I'm talking about quick, can we bring these cameras into line, you know, quickly? And how is that affected by 
shooting ProRes versus shooting Blackmagic RAW. Although I think it's easier with the Blackmagic RAW, it wasn't too much of an issue with the ProRes. I, I found that actually shooting the grass, like the greens, like, and I think, I think the rendering of greens is a bit of a weakness on the, on the Blackmagic cameras. Like if you look at them next to a Canon camera or next to an Ari or something, they, they do certainly lo lose a certain quality of that color. I kind of like the way the 6K, I think because it hints towards green, just those, the grass just looked more vibrant and, and true to life and natural. So yeah, for, for something like this, I thought it, it is just a pretty quick minor adjustment. Now, perhaps my absolute favorite plugin for both Premiere Pro and Resolve and, and other software is um, Film Convert. And at the moment, Film Convert Nitrate. I love it. I just absolutely love that plugin for just taking the, you know, even if I only use it just a smidgen, just takes that digital something edge um, off the off the footage. And in, in narrative work, not always in corporate work, narrative work, I just love adding some some grain and stuff in there, just, just gently. Previously, when I was working in Premiere, my way to match is I'd apply Film Convert in, in the profile for the 6K and in the profile for the G2, and then kind of massage the footage. Yeah, make those adjustments in, sorry, in Blackmagic RAW, and try to bring those cameras into line, and then grade in, in Lumetri on top of that, curve adjustments, etc. and then and then whatever look I'm then working with. With Blackmagic RAW and Film Convert, again, it's the same workflow of adjusting your tint, adjusting your white balance, adjusting curves slightly, what I found myself getting better results for now was making those adjustments, bringing that log image uh, into line, or you can do it with the LUT on and then take the LUT off. And then I put Film Convert on, but I use the Ursa G2 profile for both cameras because I've already matched that log footage. And look, e even, even using ProRes, this workflow still works really well. Again, there's more flexibility in Blackmagic RAW. There's no reason not to shoot it unless you're shooting kind of freelance, giving their vision directly to an editor and, and they need ProRes or, or to a company and they want ProRes. Yeah, works really well. Easier in Blackmagic RAW. Not a problem doing this with ProRes though. So one aspect of this process that's been new for me was we got a, uh, a color chart. I'll link it below. So I was testing that for color matching uh, the cameras, ignoring kind of the Blackmagic RAW settings, just going with how I set everything at the same tint, the same white balance. And I was super impressed with how well that worked. It's not perfect, but boy, it gets you close really quick, irrespective of whether you're shooting ProRes or Blackmagic RAW. What really fascinated me, what my biggest surprise um, of this and again I'd say you know I've been a I've been a proponent like sung the praises of raw for a long time one of the tests was we we had the tints on zero on both but one at 2500 and one at 10,000 Kelvin shooting ProRes HQ and you know super amazed how close just just doing a color chart adjustment, auto set, bam, in resolve, how close that got even with the ProRes, like it could push there, you know, no worries. Was it as good as the raw? No, but the difference was not, you know, really obvious. Where it did become really obvious was when I shot with that same difference in Kelvin, but pushed the tint plus 50 on one camera and negative 50 on the other. Now, look, this may just be my lack of understanding of Resolve, my lack of experience purely as a colorist, my lack of understanding, my lack of knowledge, my general lack of lackingness. But shooting ProRes and getting the settings that wrong, yeah, I just, I could not get those kind of together looking, uh, looking right this is without secondaries just just trying to just just you know lift gamma gain white balance tints curves i could not get these you know if i could get part of the image like the wall or something looking okay 
but I could not get that looking okay and my skin looking okay or my skin looking okay and I don't know something in the shot looking right it was just I felt like you're just pushing around this kind of there's this kind of haze or this like you're just moving the whole kind of image you know this cast over the image just couldn't get it couldn't get it right of course if you do that if you if you you know and you'd have to you know widely stuff up i know i'm talking about the extremes but um if you shoot that in black magic raw which i did just go in the raw settings you just adjust a slight little thing and voila your footage is fine so obvious difference obvious 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 difference there and a huge win for black magic raw the other thing that i looked at was just under and overexposure and i only looked at the ursa uh, g2 for this component just because the 6k has a dual native iso and the and the ursa g2 doesn't and look in prores you know if you're within reasonable limits with your exposure like i found you'll be fine but if for whatever reason um you're way off and you're shooting you know 3200 iso when it should have been um and i don't know why you would ever shoot 3200 iso on the ursa g2 but hey um but if you're up there trying to bring that back and have the image look good just by bringing the exposure down uh yeah it's not really going to work so in terms of under and over exposure um having that ability to just fine tune or radically dial down your exposure in post at the iso level huge benefit of, of black magic raw definitely in some more run and gun and doco situations you can sometimes be moving quickly between different environments and that's where you know you can quickly get caught out with with exposure issues that not always like raw isn't going to save you from completely you know clipping your footage you can't you can't bring back detail that was not captured but you can end up with a more clean result by uh, adjusting that iso in post rather than trying to bring down for example a 3200 iso image so ultimately i feel like having done this it's clear to me that there is a reason that prores hq has been such an industry standard for such a long time but having said that when you have something that can it capture such good quality files such high quality images at smaller file sizes with the ability to adjust white balance tint and iso in post that is running blazingly fast on my PC in both Premiere and Resolve. Of course, I'm gonna go with that. I'm not gonna shoot ProRes. In fact, I think the only reason now that I would shoot ProRes is if as a, as a freelancer, it's required. If I'm, if I'm shooting freelance rather than dealing with the footage inside my own production company. I'm sending it off to another editor, sending it off to another company, um, and they want ProRes. But outside of that, I don't see any reason why I would, although ProRes is very good. Blackmagic Raw, just from what I'm able to do with it, just is better. And I can, yeah, shooting at like Q5, which this is, like I can get really good quality images and save myself a lot of file size it's awesome so for the next and final episode of this black magic raw series if there is anything that you do want me to cover please let me know in the comments below what i know i do want to talk about is that i just picked up a black magic video assist 7 inch so the black magic video assist 7 inch with the new firmware can capture black magic raw out of the C300 Mark II and the Panasonic EVA 1. So what I want to do is just evaluate what Black Magic RAW brings, how that improves the performance of that camera and how that kind of similar to this assessing Black Magic RAW against the internal codec uh, in that camera and can that breathe new life into what's now a what a 3 4 year old system but a really a really really good one. 
Um, we're sort of interested in that camera as kind of a B cam as like a good kind of autofocus interview camera, a very disappointing camera in terms of slow motion ability, but um, you know, for shooting those sort of long interviews and maybe having that autofocus could be a really good sort of B or C cam for us. I don't know that we would, but I don't know. I think it's really interesting that um, Blackmagic RAW is now being opened up to other camera systems. And I think it's awesome and I, and I hope it happens more widely. So yeah, we, we've been interested in maybe how would some of those Canon cameras match in with our Blackmagic cameras. And then hearing that you can shoot Blackmagic RAW with the C300 Mark II, that's like, whoa. So yeah, we're really interested to, to look at that. So that'll be coming up soon. Anyway, um, hope you're going well. Hope you're staying healthy. <sighs> yeah, it's tough at the moment. Um, thank you for watching. Really appreciate it. Uh, if you like the image, if you like, <laughs> like the image, if you like this video, hey, maybe click like or share it or um, you know hit the subscribe button, you know, or don't, you know. I won't know. I don't know who you are. So, you know, there's that.